Sarah, and some of you might recognise me from the art party sessions at Grand Junction. Even though we're not having the sessions at the moment, it doesn't mean that we, start, we can't still be creative. So, I've got an exciting technique to show you that you can do at home. It's really easy and it's loads of fun and even the adults in your house might want to get involved. So, we're going to do some vegetable printing. So to do that, you just need a few simple things. Vegetables, potato or radish or a carrot. So any little vegetable that's quite hard is suitable and in a minute I'm going to show you how to make them into a print, into a block, so that you can print a lovely design. Before I do that I'll just show you um, a couple that I've been inspired by. So here's a few designs I've made already. And there's another one over here. And as you can see on my design I've got a round shape, a spiky shape, and a square shape. And it's quite interesting if you have a few different shapes because it makes a really nice design that looks quite exciting. Um, I got my inspiration for this design from something in the house. So can you see I've got this cushion here that was on my sofa. So it's got a spiky shape, spiky shape, and then it's got some circle shapes circle shapes. So I just got a rough idea for a pattern from this. So you could do the same or you could just make up something completely by yourself. I've also chosen the colours have been a bit inspired by my cushion but it's fine just to work with whatever you have at home. What else you're going to need, so as well as having your vegetables, you're also going to need a little cutting board a little knife. When you do the cutting it's really important that you get one of the adults in the house to help you with that just because the knife will need to be a little bit sharp and you just need to be very careful. Um, you also need some paint. Now this is just normal ready mix paint that you get in any art shop. It's not a special type of ink that I use normally, it's just paint. But actually, it makes a really good result, as you're going to see in a minute. And then I've also used, as my palettes, I've just used some paper plates that I had in the house. If you haven't got a paper plate, you could use a piece of cardboard or just an old plate that you don't use very, very much. You're really going to need to put a little bit of paint on it. And then also, you're going to need some sponges. Now, this is just a little scouring pad that I cut in half just to make a little sponge which is really useful for applying the paint onto the printing block. Now, are you excited? Should we have a little go? Right. Firstly, we need to cut the printing block. So you could just cut your potato or carrot in half and you've already got a really nice circle pattern that you could actually do lots of different things with. So should we just see how this prints? I'm just going to get a little bit of, hang on, a little bit of paint. I'm going to gently apply it to my printing block potato. And then I'm going to start in the middle. Print it down. And there you go, can you see? Perfect circle. So I could keep going, I could do a lot more. But I think it might be quite interesting to show you how to cut a bit more of an interesting printing block. So this is a bigger potato, I've already cut it in half. And now very carefully, I'm just going to cut some shapes from the outside of it. go. So can you see I've got another spiky shape? So it could be like a sun or it could be a hedgehog 
or some sort of spiky sea urchin. It could be anything you want and you can also make whatever shape you want. If you don't feel like you want to challenge yourself and make anything quite this complicated, but you don't want a circle, you can also just, hang on, let's get a potato again. You can also just cut the, cut the rounded edges of your vegetable off. So you've got a little square shape. So you have a few different shapes. So now we've already got a circle, a square, and a larger spiky shape and there's loads of different things that you can do with all these shapes in terms of making lots of different designs so let's have a go let's have a go i think i'm going to use the red now i've got some red paint here hang on there you go a bit of red just going to dip a little bit of the sponge into the red paint i'm going to carefully dab it onto my freshly cut printing block. I'm going to put a little bit extra because this one has just been cut. There you go. Can you see it's got a nice even coating on it? And then I'm just going to put it down, press down hard. There you go. Got a nice printed shape there. And then I might use the other printed shape. This is the one I cut the other day. I'm going to add some paint onto that. Just dab it on. And you've got a nice printed shape there. Let's do a few more. circular pattern this time it's almost like that was the center and I'm radiating the spiky patterns round around the outside to make a really cool different design so let's put some let's add a few more circles There you go. Can you see, as you begin to add more shapes, you can get a more intricate design with a little bit more detail. But it's up to you. Some of the ones I made before were just really simple stripes, which also looks really effective. Another thing that you can do, that I've done, is I found a little paper bag at home and I've just, des just decided to put some blocks, block prints on it. And it looks much more interesting. So if you've got any paper bags at home that you want to upcycle and make it look a bit more interesting, this is a great technique to do it. So you can make wrapping paper or green cards, upcycle paper bags. So you can make some of the paper products you've got at home look much more exciting, which is a good, which is always a good thing to do. Um, let's just have a little go with my square before we finish off and you can go and have a go yourselves. I'm just going to put a little bit of red on the square. As you can see from all the things I've already made, you can have hours of fun creating different designs, mixing your colours, making different patterns and actually becoming like real textile designers by making some beautiful designs like this one. So, have loads of fun at home everybody and it would be really great to see some of the designs that you come up with because we'd love to see that. Um, you can share them on the Grand Junction social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. So, I'm looking forward to seeing those and have loads of fun. Thanks, bye!